Okay, I think we've started. <clears throat> so welcome to another uh, Push for Presidential call. Uh, this is Andy Goddard. And uh, today I want to talk about um, a principle that was kind of touched on um, last week and has been several times, but is really, um, I think, very pertinent to the push for presidential. <clears throat> There's just something about that that span from diamond to blue to presidential that um, is really, really relevant. So um, I'm going to be borrowing um, these uh, principles um, from the, a book by a good friend of mine, Brett Harward. The book is called The Five Laws That Determine All of Life's Outcomes. Um, Brett Harward was a trainer. Um, I went through a training about uh, seven years ago, and Natalie and I both, both went through it, and it was totally life-changing. Um, we were just blown away by um, the breakthroughs that we had and just the whole new uh, level of <clears throat> vision and performance and accountability that we were able to create after going through this training. So Brett uh, is the author of this book, and um, the very first law is called the Law of Vision. The law of vision basically says that, you know, if you have to know your target uh, to get there. And um, throughout the book, he, he talks about ways that um, we have, um, <clears throat> there's, there are ways of doing life that average people uh, use, and then there are ways that successful people use. Um, so, uh, Katie, glad you're here with us. She came to uh, in, uh, a little workshop that Brett Harwood did last week. So um, you, maybe you can help me uh, team teach this, Katie. We're going to go over the, the law of vision and um, <clears throat> in particular, the principle of immersion. So, um, <clears throat> so let me start out by telling the story that Brett shared um, because I think it illustrates really well this idea of, of, of knowing where you're going and actually moving towards that goal. Um, Presidential Diamond is a really uh, clear and, and well-defined goal. And so um, that has to be um, just a, a huge part of your vision in order to get there. Nobody stumbles on Presidential Diamond. It's, it's, a, it's a big goal and it's a big accomplishment. So here's how, the, here's how Brett tells the story. He was, um, <clears throat> he invited some of his clients to go fishing with him. He lives in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, uh, and they have some of the best fishing in the country there. So um, <clears throat> when the clients showed up at his house, um, you know, they, most of them had their gear, they had their, uh, their bait, their, you know, whatever they, how are they going to, fish they had they had everything ready but one of his friends um he didn't have anything he didn't have his waders didn't have tackle box uh didn't have a rod um totally just um just showed up and and brett was like oh hey um i've got some you know i've got some gear uh can we get you all um prepped so you're ready to go and the guy was like oh yeah sure that'd be great so, you know, he just kind of grabs a rod and some, some stuff, some waders. And, uh, and then they, they head down to the river and <clears throat> they, you know, the, they, they say that um, the fishing by the parking lot is always the very worst fishing because obviously the, it's been overfished. Um, the, the fish there have either been caught or they've wised up to all the people who were so lazy, they just literally walked from the parking lot to this, to the edge of the river. So um, <clears throat> basically there are three, you know, three or four of his uh, buddies, uh, clients who are with him. <clears throat> um, he and one other guy take off for, um, uh, to go upstream about a mile and uh, two of the guys stay behind. Uh, one of them heads down and starts fishing right, right off the parking lot. The other one doesn't even get out his gear. He just kind of uh, 
plops himself down on a rock so that he can tell the other one what to do and how to, how to fish and where to cast and <clears throat> what bait to use. Meanwhile, Brett and his buddy head upstream and they, they're, they're hiking for a good mile before they, they find a spot and um, they, they decide to split up and um, <clears throat> Brett decides to, to go in and um, you know, he's getting in and right around waist level, he, you know, the ground starts to get a little bit slippery. The current starts to take him down downstream. So he only goes into about, you know, his stomach kind of lower chest and, and he calls it good. Um, so he starts casting, he's, he's throwing his line, he's fly fishing. So it's, you know, back and forth, back and forth. And he looks upstream and sees his buddy and um, he watches his, his buddy go in until the water goes to his, his knees, then to his waist, then to the top of his wader. And then he does, what do you call it, Katie? That the fly, uh, the fisherman's shuffle or whatever, where you basically, you're sinking down so deep that the water is coming into your uh, wader <clears throat> and you're, um, you know, you're, you're, you're getting in deep and, and he's kind of bobbing in. So the water's up to his chin and um, <clears throat> he's, he's in and uh, uh, Brett's watching him and he gets to a spot where he can, he can just, um, you know, get these great casts. And I think within his first few casts, he pulls up a huge, huge Brown. I think it was the biggest Brett I've ever seen caught on this river. <clears throat> so, there were um, four different levels of engagement in this story. Um, you know, Brett caught some good fish that day, um, but his buddy, who went in all the way, um, by far came away with uh, the most fish and the biggest fish. Um, they, they, after a few hours, they headed back and asked how their, their buddies had done. And the one who had... Um, uh, fished off the just off the parking lot I think he got a few nibbles and obviously the guy who never got out his rod never caught a thing so um, so the principle that we're talking about is is the law of vision and in particular we're talking about immersion so let's talk about these four different uh, fishermen and the four different levels of, of immersion or <clears throat> or vision that they demonstrated. The, the first one, the lowest level, um, he was only willing to talk about what he wanted. You know, he, he said he wanted to go on this fishing trip. Um, and so he, you know, he, he showed up and um, for most of the day, he sat on this rock and shouted out, you know, where to cast and, and what bait to use. And, and just did that first level of, of immersion which is talking about it. The second level is um, doing what's convenient. And, and that's what his buddy did who stayed, who, who fished off the parking lot. <clears throat> he did what was convenient. It was easy to just trot down to the edge of the stream. He had quick access to, you know, his car. Um, he could, um, he kind of had a back door if it was getting too hot or need to use the restroom. <clears throat> He's right there. So he did what was convenient. So that's the second level of immersion and vision. The third level is doing what was safe. And that's where Brett played this day. You know, he, he, he went the distance. He, he paid a price uh, by hiking up the stream a mile. But he stopped when <clears throat> he felt like it wasn't safe. So <clears throat> that's the third level uh, is, is doing what's safe. You know, in, in doTERRA terms, Maybe you're willing to talk to some of your friends, but maybe not all of your friends. Um, maybe you've got, um, <clears throat> I don't know, a, <clears throat> uh, a certain time commitment, but you're not willing to sort of put your neck on the line and, and invest in um, a new builder or a new project or some, um, some relationship uh, that, that maybe feels hard. Uh, so, but that's the third level is doing what's safe. The fourth level is immersion, <clears throat> and that's where Brett's friend played, who went in up to his, up to his chin. Uh, he literally went for immersion. He, he was playing all in. 
And <clears throat> in our doTERRA space, total immersion looks like um, exactly what Kelly Wilson described last week. She said, we finally just decided. We went into our office, we closed the door, and we said, we're not coming out until we're Presidential Diamond. Um, so that's, uh, that is a perfect example of um, not, talking, not just talking about it, <clears throat> not just doing what's convenient or what's safe, but, but going the full distance. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, in doTERRA, we have, we, we have meet a lot of people who are willing to <clears throat> talk the talk, they're willing to make a vision board and, and say they want to be diamond and say they're going to be, do that by convention. But um, <clears throat> um, if we were to use the analogy of, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Hernando Cortez, um, when, he, when he came to conquer the Yucatan Peninsula, um, he told his men to burn the ships. Um, in other words, the ships that had brought them there once they landed on the shore and unloaded, he asked them to torch them, to completely destroy them. So there were no back doors. There, there was no way home. The only option was success. The only option was victory. And so that's what, <clears throat> that's what successful people do. They, they create their vision and then they completely immerse themselves in that vision. The same can be said of learning a new language. You know, you can say, oh, I love the Italian language. One day I want to learn Italian. You can also go to the next level of doing what's convenient. <clears throat> Every time you go to uh, Olive or to uh, Macaroni Grill, you listen to the Italian in the bathroom and um, you, you look at the menu in Italian. <clears throat> the next level is doing what's safe. You know, you order some books, maybe you take a class for a couple days, but the only way to truly learn a language is total immersion to go all in, uh, to dive in with both feet and say, we're not turning back, we're going all the way. <clears throat> so um, that is the, the first principle that, um, that I saw <clears throat> um, when, when we decided to go presidential diamond, it was, um, <clears throat> we were back from Australia, we'd been here for um, a few months back in America. And, you know, th there had been a lot of opposition. Um, we had a, a couple of legs that had kind of fallen apart. But, but we decided we are going for this and, and, and we're not going to take any excuses. Um, it's just, um, it's, it's do or die. <clears throat> and so, um, we, we jumped in, um, we, we probably had our life completely out of balance for that month. We had um, somebody uh, watching the kids, somebody else doing the, the homeschool that we were doing at the time, and um, we just dove all in. Um, we were contacting every person we knew. We were doing late nights every single night. And <clears throat> I wish I could tell you that, um, the push to presidential diamond uh, is, is this beautiful uh, frolic in the park, but it's, it wasn't for us. Um, it was um, all in, completely committed effort to, uh, to just do whatever it took to be there. Um, so, um, <clears throat> so that's, uh, Katie, what, what, what would you add to, this conversation of the law of vision and uh, immersion, this idea of being uh, just completely all in and, and burning the ships. Um, I can see the validity of that through my whole doTERRA journey, right? Like where I was when I started and then how I had to get more comfortable and how, you know, then it was the safe. And, and I feel like, um, the growth, you know, I can take this last weekend, you know, you were there with me. I had so many reasons not to come up this last weekend and do what I did, right? There was a cost involved and there was, it was my husband's birthday, which I missed. And, you know, there was all these 
reasons that I, that I could have said, okay, this is uncomfortable. I'm not going to go there. But because I was willing to go in um, and in, into the immersion aspect of that, then there was a great payout on the other end. So I think just, you know, looking at my own journey and granted there are areas I'm still in the safe zone, right? And I'm pushing myself to get to immersion. And so I think that it's really powerful though, when you do choose in and you're willing to get uncomfortable. Awesome. So could you tell us a little bit, just, just for those who don't know about the, the fly-in, um, yeah. uh, what that is and why it's such a commitment and yeah. the risk sure. involved? Yeah, so um, this last weekend we did a fly-in. So it was an opportunity for prospective builders to, be, to come in to Utah to meet the owners, to be able to really get a feel of what it means to be part of doTERRA and the culture and the difference they can make and the opportunity that it is. And um, there, it was about $500 per ticket. So you know, I flew in a couple and then myself, so that was about $1,500. Um, in addition to that, it's time away and you take a risk, right? Because you don't know for sure if the people you're flying in are gonna choose in. You have hope, but they have to make that call. So, um, so there was definitely time away for them. And, and in this scenario, I had reached out to a couple I was feeling drawn to helping and they accepted that offer and they flew in. And because they were willing to make that jump and because I was willing to make that jump, they got to have a full effect of meeting with Corey Lindley, getting questions answered, having the tour of doTERRA, um, getting to have dinner with you guys and ask questions and, and it to really come up with a business plan that was effective for them. And they are doing a huge 30 day push, right? To, to their high 15 one-on-ones and four classes in 30 days. And you know, the growth that can come from that is tremendous. And they already have people that are, you know, that are excited to do this with them. So it was a really great opportunity. And I think if you guys have people that, that would fit into that category, it's definitely worth taking that chance for them. Absolutely. <clears throat> and, and you did such a great job of preparing them. Um, you could tell that you've been planting seeds for, I mean, with them, it's been years, right? <clears throat> yeah, they were one of my very first enrollments. When I first started building, they just, they weren't in a place to build at the time. And I wasn't in a place to lead them for what they needed at the time. So we both had to get our stuff together to come together at this time. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah so, um, I, I, you know, Natalie and I could, were just so impressed with your leadership, um, by sure. having the vision for these people, investing in them, and then taking this risk by bringing them out here and then coming out yourself. So, <clears throat> just, um, just tremendous leadership on your part. Thank you for sharing that, Katie. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> for those of you who are interested, we're, we're going to be doing this on an ongoing basis. <clears throat> um, you can go to uh, sharesuccess.com forward slash events, and um, you can check out the next one. Um, <clears throat> it's like Katie said, it's $500 per person, and that covers their food, their lodging, uh, transportation, um, so it's up to you to get them here. Um, you know, have some people do it locally. Um, <clears throat> we have, we have seen very few people who, who fly in and have this experience who don't turn into builders. <clears throat> um, something about, you know, walking through campus, uh, meeting some owners, um, shaking hands with top builders. Uh, it, it builds belief. And in the, in the end of the day, that's the business we're in is building belief. So um, it's, it's been really fun uh, to partner with, with you, our diamonds, um, and to make these happen. So uh, if, if you're interested, feel free to register your, you and your people for next, um, the next one's in May. <clears throat> I don't know the exact dates, but they're at sharesuccess.com slash events. Uh, any questions about that before we move on? Awesome. Um, <clears throat> so one of the things that, um, that we get to do in doTERRA is um, not only believe in ourselves, but also believe in others. And that's one of the things we did this last weekend was 
you know, Katie exhibited belief in these prospects and she saw in them leadership and she saw a path for them that they didn't see for themselves. Um, I mean, they're already amazing people and leaders in their own right, but um, Katie had a vision for them <clears throat> being partners with her, being um, leaders in doTERRA and, and playing uh, a role in her business and in their communities, uh, stepping up to the next level. So that's, that's one of the things we get to do, uh, taking the same principle of, of law of vision and applying it to uh, how we interact with other people, how we see in them leadership that maybe they don't see themselves. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's one of the great challenges and great opportunities that we have is to, to see what people don't see in themselves and then to transfer that vision to them. So, Andy, uh, I have a question. Please go ahead. Okay, today at lunch, I, um, I'm meeting with a lady that is um, top in another MLM. And she, um, she actually reached out to me and wanted um, to learn about the oils. And so um, depending on what happens at this lunch, this of course will be her first exposure. Uh -huh. um, so, so it's basically 500 and that pays for everything when she's down there. And then, so are y'all flying them down there? Or did Katie fly her people to Katie, the? It's up to you, it's up to you and, and them to work out transportation to get to Salt Lake and then okay. we'll take over from there. So I don't yeah. know, I don't know what Katie's exact arrangements were there, but. Um, so the way that I did it was I had them get themselves there and then I covered the $500 for each of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, cool. So they had some skin in the game too. They did. And that worked out great. There was no complaints on their end. They were happy to do it, and they saw the opportunity. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, great question. Um, so, yeah, that's an important principle, too, is as we invest in people, the more we give them a chance to invest and, and match that investment, um, it pays off. You know, they, they, if you pay for everybody's tickets to convention, if you pay for their airfare, um, chances are they're, they're not as vested. So same thing with this, with, uh, this retreat that we do. <clears throat> um, great way for people to, to take risk and, and uh, uh, test their belief and then uh, eventually grow their belief. Great question. Um, okay, any, any other thoughts, uh, questions about this, this law of vision? and uh, this, this principle of immersion. I actually do have a comment about it, and I loved the analogy. I need to read that book. One thing that I think um, might be a limiting belief for me is like shortly after I reached Diamond, I got, I got really, really attacked in my health, just really sick, and I've always been really healthy. Um, and then... And rocks, you know, coached me through that uh -huh. with the oils and everything. And then after I hit blue, the same thing happened. And I'm and I watched my dad, you know, um, work business and just I, I think he I think he killed himself. Honestly, I think he just ran himself into the ground. And so in the back of my mind, it it, it seemed like as fast as I was going, mm -hmm. I put the brakes on just as fast. Mm -hmm. And so um, I don't know if, if that's still kind of like lingering in my mind, but I see that this complete immersion, I'm definitely at level three, but I'm, I'm probably tinkering between, you know, right. level three and level four, but realizing for me that, I mean, self-care, you know, is definitely going to be something that I'm going to have to focus on from, from here and from here on. But um you know, like that immersion thing, the guy was only in there. It didn't last forever. Right. You know, and he, he achieved his goal and then, and then got out safely, I assume. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> even when you were telling the story, I was, you know, it like made my heart pitter patter. I was like, Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> would I would I do that? You know, would I actually? But right. of course, Bobby had a Bobby had a brother in law that died. He he filled his waiters up, and and you know he died doing that. Oh, and so wow. I guess I'm kind of looking at my dad, thinking, I don't want that to be me. But it doesn't have to be me, you know. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> um. Boy. Um. So definitely self-preservation should, should be our first law vision, our, our, our very first goal. Um, there's no, no goal worth giving your life for, right? <clears throat> Can so, I say something to that, Andy? Please go ahead, Katie. Okay, so my thought on that is that, you know, we all have that, that voice that says, okay, this is gonna kill you when you're doing something scary. And, part of the challenge is to overcome that, right? Is to say, okay, wait, is this something that's really going to kill me? Or is this just something that is outside of my comfort zone? I think, you know, there are certain things that, that are going to be strong enough that you say, okay, this isn't wise, right? If the, if the fly-in was $25,000 instead of, you know, 1500, I might think, okay, is this the best choice right now but am i and that probably wouldn't be the best choice to fly somebody in for twenty five thousand dollars at that moment but to do fifteen hundred which is uncomfortable but and pushes my boundaries but still you know i know i'm not going to die and that things are going to be covered then then that's worth taking that chance and getting uncomfortable and jumping in so i think you do have a level of self-preservation but at the same time, you push it as far as you can, knowing, like looking with foresight of, am I going to die? If they choose in and I lose out on this opportunity with them because they don't choose in, is, am I going to die? No, I'm not going to die. I'm going to be okay. And something else will come along. Then, then you realize that that's worth it, right? If somebody tells you to jump off the cliff, that's not the best option to do it. And so you just have to weigh that with, with really knowing, okay, is this something that really literally is going to kill me? Then you do it or you don't do it, right? You like keep that boundary, but always be willing to get uncomfortable and then set boundaries for yourself so that you can stay safe too. Like you get to choose what your life looks like. You get to choose how people are allowed to treat you and the things that are allowed to happen. And so if it's something that doesn't fall within your boundaries, then you say no. And if it's something that just makes you uncomfortable, you say yes. Does that make sense? Kind of a it weird. It totally thing. does. And it, <laughs> it sounds like it is all about boundaries too. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. That was great. And I, the only thing I would add to that, that's, that was perfect, Katie. Thank you. <clears throat> um, the, I think one of the biggest breakthroughs that I've had in our whole doTERRA journey is choosing to believe that we are perfectly supported. <laughs> and um, it happened when we were at the dentist one time and, you know, I, the, the dentist had his drill out, my mouth was open. Um, I think, I don't know if it was before the shot or after, anyways, it was, you know, all the sounds of the machines and just, the smells of the dentist's office. And as I was tensing up, you know, you feel like this guy is gonna hurt me. <clears throat> I, I just, in that moment, I, I switched my belief to he is part of my support team. By, by doing what he's doing, he is helping me to actually fulfill my life purpose and to, to do it more effectively and, and productively. And, and so he's part of my support team. And, and so I just chose to just repeat that throughout the whole visit and, and millions of times since then that I am perfectly supported. I'm perfectly supported. And so if, if you choose that as your mantra, as, as your core belief, <clears throat> then you're, you're not going to do anything that risks your life or your health. You, you're going to, you're going to choose you know, being supported first and foremost. Um, you're not going to uh, kill yourself from overwork. You're not going to uh, put yourself at risk. 
um, it's <clears throat> it, it's all about um, that you know that primary belief and choosing um, <clears throat> choosing life, choosing um, uh, a life of of um, just connection and, and and support that um, that I think is really the foundation. <clears throat> so is that helpful, Kyla? I hope those are great questions. It is so helpful, and I think that's been um, something that I've you know I've needed to work on throughout my life. And what's so funny is I actually a long time ago I created a product on hiring and supporting <laughs> and so you know how sometimes you hear that therapists become therapists to heal themselves <laughs> I think yeah, that right. product was probably you know really um, really shining at my at my core core limiting belief so I love this I'm perfectly supported uh, I'm gonna be yeah I'm choosing life that's that's awesome thank you yeah thank you and, and I will admit that um, after the stretch to a new rank, you know, now that I've been totally wiped out and sometimes we've taken a, a week or, or a month or like we, we've taken some downtime. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not too proud to say that sometimes the stretch, um, there's, there's some, uh, you know, there's some soreness, just like a, a real workout, right? There's, there's going to be some sore muscles and there's going to be going to be some recovery time. So just no. give yourself that time, give yourself that space and um, be sure though that your, your belief is that this is, you know, this is a growing process. This is a stretching process. This is not, um, <clears throat> you know, this is not my death march. I'm, I'm not marching my way to uh, self-destruction. Uh, this is, this is just part of, you know, the, the process of building muscle, building um, skills, building uh, a doTERRA team, build, you know, building success. So Andy, um, kind of funny until Kyla talked here. Um, I, I wrote down some points as I was listening to the story earlier. My first point was staying local versus going abroad, buying a class A, R, V and traveling. <laughs> uh. <laughs> So, um, and, and just kind of looking at the two, although I think the RV travel sounds fun, it may not be the time just yet. Um, so staying local, what I want to talk about here or ask your opinion, and then also kind of jump down to a prior call you did, which I can't find on recording. Maybe you have it, you know, and, uh, you know, it was five questions you asked for prospective builders when you interviewed them. It was back in like October of last year, one of the first presidential calls that was done. But looking at relationships, you know, this is a relationship building, you know, business, doTERRA is built around leadership and enhancing those relationships. There's a lot of past friends, a lot of acquaintances, a lot of friends of friends who maybe, you know, met one time or never met or friends of acquaintances. And I'm thinking about, you know, okay, reaching out to these people to share doTERRA with, but avoiding that weirdness of, hey, the only reason you're talking to me now is because of this multi-level marketing opportunity. Otherwise, you would have never said hello to me in the first place. What do you recommend there? I'm almost wondering, you know, is it good protocol to stop in and say hello to somebody and just kind of refresh the old relationship or see them or call them or Facebook them and maybe touch in a few weeks later with something else. And, and then all of a sudden a month down the road say, Hey, here's something that I want to share with you given, you know, the situation you, you kind of recollaborated with them after being static for 10 or 20 years. That's a great question. And, um, <clears throat> Um, I still remember when Natalie was getting started in doTERRA, um, she would hop on the phone or she'd, you know, go to lunch with someone and, um, there was a significant time investment to, to pay the price just to reconnect. Um, and that's, you know, the relationship always has to be primary. It has to be first. <clears throat> so... Um, sometimes that it can happen in 10 minutes. Sometimes it takes, uh, you know, a few visits, a few hours. Um, but, but definitely, um, it's, it's worth every amount of effort 
to, to convey to them, look, I'm, I'm reaching out to you because I care about you. I want to know how you're doing. I want to know about your family. I want to know what you're up to, um, you know, what your goals are. Just, you know, catch me up. Let's, let's connect. So um, definitely, um, and that can be tricky when, when people live a long ways away. Um, but, you know, it's, it's funny, though, how um, th this keeps coming up. Um, when, you, when you connect with people, um, because each of you is, is, is a successful diamond in doTERRA, you've proven that you are an excellent listener. And as you connect with people, you will hear in everything they say and do their unmet needs. And that is your primary job as a solutions provider is, is to hear the need and then to meet that need. So it's, 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 um, it's, it's almost like you have to um, hold yourself back to, you know, from shoving solutions down their throat because they're like, yeah, there's, you know, this little, little Timmy has got you know, this cough or, um, you know, I, I wish I had more time to spend with the kid or, I mean, you just hear it everywhere. And, and so <clears throat> connection really becomes your first goal. And then the, the second goal is, is to, to give the invitation. And, and I mean, I, I know who you are, Bob, and <clears throat> you and Kyla are just all heart. And so, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're going to do a great job as, as you reconnect with these old friends. And, you know, sending that, that clear message, you know, we're friends first. And, and I'm here to serve you. <clears throat> you know, it's not an, an either or thing. Like <clears throat> we, we can either be friends or business partners. It's like, Hey, I have these incredible uh, tools that I can serve you with that I only acquired in the past year or two. And um, so I'm, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to serve you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. That helped a lot. You know, on the five questions you asked prospective builders, do you, do you recall what those are that you can wrap them up real quick, or do you have access to that recording? I kind of looked down to the group and didn't see it. But I'd have to poke around for the recording, but um, if you go to nsrevolution.com, um, there's a, a triangle, a circle with a triangle in the middle of the page. Okay. And if you just click on that, um, you'll see – uh, some some questions. I don't know if those are the exact same questions, but um, these are, you know, just just ways to kind of get to know people and find out where they are. Um, it's you know, th there was nothing magical about those five questions, but you know, it's it's all about kind of um, reconnecting with with their core, right? Getting to know their um, their world, their, um, their gifts, their, um, their vision. Um, so it's, <clears throat> take, take a look at those and let me know if anything else. Okay. Uh, great. Great question. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. Uh, by the way, Bob, we, um, we were in with our chiropractor, uh, a few weeks ago <clears throat> and we said, Oh, we have a team member who's an expert at, hands and feet and he's like oh is it Robert Fennell like, yeah so he, he said that you need to update your website because he was going to come to one of your trainings but you haven't your website. tell him I've been busy doing doTERRA <laughs> I know we told him <laughs> we kind of hate to, to have you re, you know commit to that because uh, you're doing a lot of good over here in doTERRA so thank you anyways um Great, great comments, great questions. Any other uh, questions or comments? Well, if not, I think we'll go ahead and uh, call that a wrap. Oh, Andy? yeah, go ahead. Can you repeat the name of the book? Oh, sure. Yeah, so it's the five laws that determine all of life's outcomes by Brett Harward. And it's, uh, it's a book and it's also available as an audio book. And Andy, can I just say one thing about the training? Because 
you know, I don't, you didn't say much about it, but um, I'm, it's something that I'm planning on doing the training with Brett yeah. in the future. And I've had a couple of friends go through the training and it's not doTERRA related, but it is life related. And so I think if you guys have the opportunity to do it, it's something I would for sure take advantage of um, to just help you connect with who you are and your life purpose a little more. I think it can be really powerful. So. Absolutely. Um, I'm opening up a chat box and posting the link to the next um, training that they're doing. Um, I think it's June 15th to 18th. Cool. So, um, yeah, I, don't, I can't. Um, I can't over exaggerate um, the value that was created for me and Natalie going through this training. Um, it's it helped us unload a bunch of baggage. It helped us, you know, as Kirk Duncan teaches, you, you only um, can bring people into your space uh, if you've created a space for them. So um, this training helped me and Natalie just unload the baggage, create uh, a new um, space uh, for us as we were starting doTERRA. And I think it was one of the keys for our success. So uh, definitely worth a trip out here if, if you guys um, can make it happen. Um, we'd, we'd be happy to connect while, with you while you're out here and you know, see if maybe you um, want to come in and meet the owners too. It's, um, it's a life changer. It's only 150 bucks too, so four days of training, for 150 bucks, screaming deal. Basically a service project they're doing. So thanks for bringing that up, Katie. Um, great, any other uh, questions or, or comments? Awesome, well thank you so much for joining us guys. Um, the push for Prez is, um, is not a, um, it's not one for the week, but it is so worth it. <clears throat> the, the skills, the character, uh, the characteristics, the attributes that are gained in this push um, make it so worth the while and so worth the effort. So um, I just wanna honor you for the, the journey that you're on, uh, for the effort that you're putting forth, and, and most of all, for the lives that you're changing. Um, doTERRA is such a catalyst for life change. So thank you for everything you're doing. Thanks for being on the call with us this week. And uh, the Jansons, um, we thought they were going to be available today, but they'll be on next week. Uh, they're going to share their journey to presidential. So look forward to, to hearing some of their insights. And thanks again for being with us. Have a great week. Yeah,